Welcome to everybody in their advisory classes here at Wish Charter Middle School and High School. I am so excited today. I'm Valerie Udozer. I'm a proud parent of two Wish sons and a proud member of our phenomenal diversity and inclusion committee. You all know that it's Black History Month, so I'm very excited. Uh, we have this wonderful presentation today, and I'm proud to introduce you to this man sitting right here. He is a champion in our community. His name is Fernando Pullum. He is a Grammy award-winning musician, music teacher. He has taken youth just like yourselves to Spain, to all different parts of the world. He teaches them how to play instruments, his students have worked with the likes of Tupac Shakur, Jenny Aiko, Jasmine Sullivan, and he's gonna tell you all the rest of them <laughs> that you guys probably already know. And um, Fernando or Mr. Pop is part of our community. He has a huge uh, community arts center in Lamert Park, right maybe 20 minutes away from our school. So welcome, Mr. Pullum. Thank you so much for having me. I have to make one correction. I am not a Grammy winning musician. I play with many Grammy winning artists, but I don't want to uh, be misleading in that statement. But okay. I have Grammy winning students. I had six Grammy winning students. So you taught people who went on to win a Grammy. Yes, I did. I think that says something to the power of a teacher. <laughs> That's amazing. And your students who actually went to this center in Lamert Park have gone on to work with Tupac and Jasmine Sullivan. Sullivan. Well, that was from a prior, um, that's from my days at Washington High School. And, uh, but most recently, those students have played with um, BTS on the Billboard Awards and they played with Missy Elliott and Sierra on the American Music Awards. And, you know, we play with, we open for Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, you know, the, the experiences and opportunities have been just truly amazing. Amazing. I love how you promote these kids and just send them to SOAR. It seems like the sky's the limit with the um, students who you teach music to. Now, in a recent interview, I, there was something that you said, and it struck me. You said that the way you got into loving music or falling in love with music, as many of our students have, is that that was the only area where a teacher praised you? Yes, you know, I, I, I made a sound on the trumpet and, and people just freaked out. And they said, man, that's, how did you do that? And prior to that, I would have folks say, well, he's gonna become a, a convict. He's going to be in trouble because what I was doing, I was lashing out because, you know, like a lot of people, my background was really challenging. You know, both my parents were drug addicts. My mom, unfortunately, was a prostitute. And so I became hyper aggressive and defensive about all of those things. But when I played an instrument, I was just it didn't matter what my economic status was. It didn't matter that my parents were drug addicts. It didn't matter that my mom was a prostitute. I became a musician and that's all I need to be. And so I was able to focus on that and, you know, and, and work very hard at it. That's amazing. So it sounds like you had a, and still have a natural gift and that music also was healing to you. It, music is extraordinarily healing because you get to express yourself. But however you feel, you can play that. You can communicate stories to other people. And you can, you know, where, whereas they won't sit down and hear you have a conversation about your challenges, you can sing about them, you can play about them. And, mm -hmm. and you have an audience in that way. And nor, nor do you want to just be that forward with everything that's that's going on in your life because you might not be ready for it. As a young person, you're not ready to share everything that, that's going on in your life with, uh, with strangers. Mm, that's amazing. So really quickly, did you catch that Super Bowl opening show? 
oh, I love the Super Bowl opening show. You know, I, I get to uh, look at things like all, all the television shows that I see now, I look at it from a different perspective because I always have students performing in them. Wow. And, you know, one of my students was playing with Dr. Dre and I, and I met Dr. Dre. He's not played for Dr. Dre before myself. And, uh, you know, he recently interacted with my students uh, from the Pullum Center as well. Wow. That's amazing. So I wanted to get your take on modern music and it's Black History Month. So we're talking about the Black culture and the influence of our culture on music today. When you're listening to current artists, current rappers, current singers, what influences of African-American culture as well as music do you hear or do you identify? Well, first and most importantly, music came from Africa. We all started in Africa. Uh, I used to, as a youngster, listen to rock and roll and say like, wow, uh, that's white culture's music and this is black culture's music over here, but there's no such thing. We created it all. You know, there's European music, but when the music that comes from America, we are the genesis, we're the seed of all of that music. It might have a different shape, uh, but we started all of that. And it's not uh, uh, me saying it to be racist or promoting black people, but it is what it is. Because even when I listen to Latin music, uh, that came from Africa too. I listened to a, a group playing cumbias, you know, and I said like, wow, that's, that's, that's a, uh, a Latin band. They said, no, that's, that's from a certain region of Africa. I said like, wow. And it was a bunch of Africans playing that music, you know, so if there would be no music here if it were not for the black experience. That's true, that's amazing. So can you identify, I'm always hearing like a certain rap song or, and then I'll hear an older, like an R&B song within the rap song. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's so-and-so. And a lot of the younger kids don't know about sampling music and how so much music is borrowed from black artists on TikTok and even before TikTok. Well, I, I say that that's a good phenomenon and also a bad one. It's good that we can stay connected to our, our past and, and there's such great music there. But it's bad in, this, in the sense that music education is not what it used to be. So get left to our own devices, we're going to create. But because we haven't been taught to play instruments and, and write songs the way we, they used to do it, we have to borrow from the past in order to express ourselves today. So, you know, so that, that say it's good and bad, you know, because we've also, you know, we've, we, we, we're keeping that history alive, but we need to be able to make the history go forward. And in order to go forward, you have to play something. Mm, that's very interesting. I always, whenever I hear Biggie Smalls, -na 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 -na, and then when I listen to DeBarge, I'm like, this is the song I love. <laughs> the original, and I want to do the cha-cha. Anyway, um, so do you have any current artists who you really, really like and feel are highly influenced by African diaspora? Uh, like, like I said before, they all are influenced. Whether they understand it or not, they are all influenced. But I like to have, uh, I'm sorry, I like to listen to artists that have a complete understanding of music. See, if you really listen to Dr. Dre, He's mm -hmm. throwing in classical music too. But that open, ding, 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 ding. Yes, but, yes, yes. But that's, that's classical. You know, Ooh. just even the, the harmonic uh, structure of the chord that he's playing, that's classical music. And when I, uh, you know, but I, I like people like Bruno Mars, I like what they're doing because they're bringing instruments back 
and I can hear, you know, I, I played with Bruno before and it was absolutely a thrill to do. And I played with Justin Timberlake, you know, before, you know, but it was a part of his tribute to Charlie Wilson. So it was like mm. Charlie Wilson, Stevie Wonder, Justin Timberlake, Pharrell, Snoop Dogg. It was just, it was just a lot of fun to be on a stage with those people playing music that that powerful because they utilize the whole musical palette and instruments. Mm. I love when I hear instruments as well in songs, violins. You know, you're you play the trumpet. Um, yeah. I love drums. Um, sometimes the music sounds a little um, electronic. I guess they call it auto tuning. It, it sounds. Well, auto tune is what it corrected, so it, it sounds the pitch matches in as is perfect. Even though they can't deliver that themselves, they can process it through a computer to make it line up with the the other electronic instruments that you're hearing. But what you are actually hearing is a bunch of electronica. You hear a lot of, you know, you don't hear anything that people put in their breath through, you know, that they're hitting with their hands. You're hearing a lot of sampling. You know, which is fine in itself, but but once once again, that goes back to we don't know how to play an instrument. You know, a lot of people. I, I take out a a saxophone or trumpet and show it to a bunch of kids. Unfortunately, now they they don't know what it is. It's a museum piece. Do you feel that kids today are more into other things than picking up instruments and learning how to play instruments? Well, I think they would be interested if we gave them the opportunity. Uh, we, we dialed back the opportunities for them. Uh, and I really don't understand it. But, you know, whereas kids had to be on a team, they had to be in the band. Uh, they don't have a band. I don't know what your school is like, but most schools don't have instruments at all. So you can't have a band without instruments. Or nor do they have a, a teacher that is qualified to be able to teach those kids to play the instrument. Yes. I'm happy. Wish Charter does have an amazing, they do have a great um, musical program. What would you say to any high schooler or middle schooler watching this conversation right now who maybe wants to be a singer or a musician who's looking at Bruno Mars, who you've worked with and wants to be just like them? I would say dream and make that dream into an action word. That means that, you know, you have to figure out what did Bruno do? What did he practice? How, who did he study with? What does it take to learn how to play a saxophone? Uh, what instruments should I be looking at? Uh, should, do I have a teacher? Then you have to practice. I practice eight hours a day. Wow. And, and it's not a, just about talent because a lot of people, can, they, they can start off really fast. But if you're not consistent in your practice, you will never get there. So make your dream into an action word, but actually practicing and participating in what you're uh, trying to do. Like every day that I, I got home, I asked myself, what did I do to become a trumpet player today? And if I couldn't answer with a positive uh, statement, then I knew I wasn't going to be a, a trumpet player. So you should be to ask yourself that every day, what did I do to become a singer? What did I do to become a dancer? Now, if you could say three out of seven days, you only had a good answer and four days you had no answer, you would never become those things. So make sure that you're doing it every day. And if you do it every day, I guarantee you, you will be successful because that's what it really takes. Wow. I think that kind of transfers to everything you do. You know what I mean? Even if you want to be a writer or a doctor or whatever you want to be, ask yourself every day. This has been so amazing. So if students want to sign up for your school or study with you, how do they do that? Well, we're located at 3351 West 43rd Street, right on the corner of 43rd and Degnan. Uh, they stop by. It's free. And we don't care if you're good or not. We, we care if you work. 
come in with your heart, come in uh, with your dreams, and, and we'll try to help you realize those dreams. Stop by, and, and also you can look us up on the website. It's P-U-L-L-U-M-C-E-N-T-E-R.org, PulumCenter.org, and you can find out a little bit more what's going on. PulumCenter.org. So parents, students, teachers, you're interested in studying with this man and all of his uh, protégés and, and fabulous teachers, jump on that site or just stop by Lamert Park. So you mentioned a song. I'm going to close out. You mentioned that Dr. Dre song. And it's so funny because I think I was just listening. And you nod your head and tell me, was this the song, wait, that you were listening to? Let's see. If I can hear. Yeah, that's kind of for nature. <laughs> that whole opening. It's an instrumental, right? He has this. Oh no, this is the instrumental. Wait, this one. Is this the one. Yes. Yeah. I've always liked this. Is this the piano? Yes. I love this too. I think we're going to end on this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank we'll you for having me. Rock out to this. Have a great school day, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Pullum. Happy Black History Month to you. All right. All right. And thank you for all you do in our community. All right. Thank you.